This is 5.4, number 85. Suppose f is a positive decreasing function. So I'm just going to draw a picture. I don't know what it looks like, but I know it's positive and decreasing, so I'm just going to do that. There we go. Then the area function. So this area function will give you the net area starting at 0 to x of f of t dt. Is that going to be an increasing function? No, wait. The area function is de is a decreasing function. Okay, so let's talk about the area. Zero to x? Whoa, whoa. Oh, it's, I'm looking at the wrong one, sorry. <laughs> I was starting to trip out because the answer wasn't matching in my brain. It's an increasing function. Why is that true? So I'm going to do the area function in gold. And here's how the area works. As I, right here, what's the area from here to here? It's going to be zero because I have no area. So the function is going to start at zero. Then if I integrate up to here, it's going to add that because it's adding area. So it's going to increase by that much area. Okay. And then as I add the next piece, you notice it's smaller. I'm adding less because it's not as tall. So it's not going to go up as fast. Let me do something here. So first you're going to add a lot of area. Then you're going to add not as much. And look, as you move to the right, what do you notice about these little area pieces? They get in what? Smaller. So you're adding a smaller and smaller piece. That means the amount you add is going to decrease. So you're still going to increase your function, but the amount you increase is going to keep on getting smaller and smaller. So in other words, as I move across, I add less and less. So I increase not as fast, but it's still an increasing function because you keep on adding more area. So that's part A. Part B, you have um, a negative increasing function. So let me erase these for part B. Now your function's negative, but increasing. So let me do this. That's negative and increasing. Again, <clears throat> we start at zero. That's not the right color. We start at zero because if you integrate from here to here, you're adding nothing. You, the area under the curve from there to there is zero. There's nothing to add. But once you move over a little bit, look, that integral from there to there, it's going to be a negative, right? Because net area if is below, you subtract. So you're going to be negative. But then you're going to add this much more negative area. So it's going to decrease even further. But as we go further and further, we're going to be decreasing by a smaller amount because the area is getting smaller. So at first it's going to decrease really fast and then it's going to slow down and not decrease as fast. So the question is, this will be a decreasing function. Yes, decreasing. The reason it's decreasing, you keep on adding more negative area. So the net area becomes smaller and smaller. So that is going to be true. Par C. Let's read Par C. So Par C say, the function p3 equals sine 3x and q of x equals 4 sine 3x are antiderivatives of the same function. Wow. So I'll say this. How do you know if they're antiderivative of the same function? Take the derivative of each because the derivative of the antiderivatives gives you the original function. And that's how you'll know if they are the antiderivative of the same function because you're going backwards. So the derivative of this is sine of box. What's the derivative of sine of box? It's cosine of box times derivative of box. But then if you take the derivative of this for sine of box, derivative for sine of box is for cosine of box times derivative of box. This is 12 cosine of 3x. That is not the same as this, which is 3 cosine of 3x. So definitely, they're not antiderivatives of the same function. 
So when you take the derivative of an antiderivative, you should start with the original function. They are not the same. Pardi. I think we're losing people. 32, maybe not. I hear these noises on my computer. Pardi. A of x is that 3x squared minus x minus 3 is an area function for f. Then b of x is also an area function for f. Okay. I thought we lost somebody. There we go. Did I stop recording? Oh, this is all one problem. Okay. I'm gonna have weird talking in the middle of this problem. So it's saying these are the area functions. In other words, these came from something else. So the area function for this would have been an integral from some value, which I say, I'm just gonna call it a to some value of x of some function I will call f of x. And this one would have come from a to x of some function f of x because they're claiming um, it's an area function for the same function. So these are area functions for the same function, um, but you don't have to start the same value, right? So I'm gonna start at b instead of a. <clears throat> now, what you should notice with this, if what's the difference between these two? It's just a constant, right? That's the only difference. Well, when you take the antiderivative of something, they're going to be pretty much the same thing apart from a constant. And since we start at different values, that's going to give us different constants. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Um, how can I explain? I will explain like this. So if I have a function f of x, and say it just looks like this. And then if I want the area, I'll say from a to x, as opposed to from b to x, Here's my point. From here to here, they're both the same. For that area function, it would be the same for both of those. So that is like this part there. And so this is the difference right there. And that's a constant. The area from A to B is a constant. So that's where that's coming from. So the actual formula or the function for the antiderivative is the same for both meaning they came from the same function. Because how do you check this? You take the derivative of this, and it should be that. You take the derivative of this, and it should be that. And it is. The derivative of that and the derivative of that are both the same, so they came from the same formula. The difference, the constants there are different because you could start at different points, giving you a little different area, differing by a constant. Hopefully that made sense. That's kind of a hard question to kind of get your brain around. But let's look at this last one here. This last one is a muy importante question. That, how is that true? How is that zero? Does that make any sense? I will explain to you why that makes sense. This integral. If you integrate that, that gives you net area. Net area is a constant, it's just a number. You're gonna get some number from that. What's the derivative of any constant? Zero, okay? Some of you might get confused with the fundamental theorem of calculus, say, oh, you just put B in there. No, the only time that fundamental theorem works if that variable there matches that variable. If those are the same, then you plug it in. If they're not the same, you can't. And in fact, A and B are constants. You will get a number there. And the derivative, therefore, is zero. Dun, dun, dun. 